rated R for birds and blood and guts and stuff. Birds can be cute. They can be annoying. They can be patriotic. They can be delicious. And most of the time, they're just downright beautiful. A while ago, I visited the Field Museum of Natural History. I was able to document different aspects of bird anatomy, and I added a few little fun tidbits as well. So without further ado, let's begin. This is a great horned owl skeleton. Bird skeletons, for the ones that fly at least, most of their long and thick bones are hollow. Now, humans' bones, they're spongy-like, but you can't really see that. In birds' bones, you can actually see the holes and where air would be normally. Let's start with the skull. We have the cranium, and then the upper mandible, and the lower mandible, which are the upper and lower jaws in humans. Now let's look at a wing protruding from the body. We have two humeruses or humerci, and extending from the end of that, we have the ulna and the radius. And so this is just our forearm for humans. But birds, quote unquote, hands are extended because they need to fly and they need more surface area to get lift off of the ground. So right here is actually a bunch of metacarpals. And the phalanges are just right here that are a lot longer than humans, comparatively. These cone-shaped bones, there are two of them, one for each side of the eye. They are called the scleral bone, and they hold the eyes in place. Most birds have these. Now, let's look at the body of the bird. Right here is a modified sternum called the carina, or most people say the keel. Now, it's extending from the middle of the, of the sternum, and it has that greater surface area that connects to the humerus that allows the bird to get much heavier lift pushing off from the ground using its breast muscles. We have the ribs right here, pretty small. We have the backbone, vertebrae. This is the scapular, which would usually be connected from here, then all the way over here, but this bird is kind of messed up, as you can see. This right here is a caracoid, which would be connected from here to here. And then these two are, you guessed it, you, you probably didn't, but it's the wishbone. Yes, all birds have wishbones. Now, let's look at the feet. Just like in feet, the, the hands and wrists are a lot longer in birds than in humans. So sometimes it looks like if you see an ostrich that their knee is backwards, but in reality it's that's actually their ankle. Crazy, I know. Okay, so right here we have the femur. Then extending from that is the tibia and fibula. And right here is a tarsometatarsus, or in humans, the tarsus. Then we have a bunch of little flanges for the feet. And then here are 
the cool looking claws or talons. Birds bones are made up of the same material as humans. You guessed it, calcium. So drink your milk please. Welcome to story time. This is Penn Sanders and we will be talking about the passenger pigeon. This bird right here is the passenger pigeon that went extinct on September 1st, 1914 at the Cincinnati Zoo. The last passenger pigeon was Martha. The passenger pigeon's decline is mainly due to humans and habitat loss. Humans hunted these birds to extinction. At first, it was just Native Americans who lived in America, where this bird is native to, and things were doing fine until the Europeans came. There was there started to be a slow decline up until 1870, when a rapid decline began, and the last bird, the last wild bird, was shot in 1901. The passenger pigeon, sometimes some scientists believe that the passenger pigeon was once the most numerous bird on the face of the earth. Sometimes people would say that as they were outside they would see these birds just darkening the sky barely able to see the light of the sun. That is just how much, how many birds you can think that there were. Rest in peace, passenger pigeon. Rest in peace. Let's talk eggs. Right here we have two different eggs. This is a real ostrich egg, biggest living bird today. This is a recreation of an elephant bird egg, which is giant. Elephant birds could reach up to 10 feet tall and weigh half a ton. Eggshells color are made from calcium carbonate. That's mostly what the shell is made out of. Some birds lay eggs as small as this, just like hummingbirds. But then is the biggest egg known to date of an elephant bird. The elephant bird was hunted to extinction in Madagascar because of humans. And humans found great use out of these eggs because as you can probably guess, the unfertilized ones and probably the fertilized ones tasted pretty good. And they're giant birds, so they have giant amounts of meat on them. The ostrich, still a big egg. Still now ostriches are protected, and so they're fine, doing, doing pretty fine now. Here we have Mr. Turkey. Let's start at his head. He's been skinned and defeathered so that we may look at his insides. Starting here we have the upper mandible, the lower mandible, we have the sclerotic ring, birds, turtles, some reptiles and fish have this, keeps the eye in place, and humans don't really need it. And right next to it, to the behind, is the ear. Yes, birds have ears. They're right behind the eyes. You can't really see them because feathers are usually covering them. As we're going down, we have the neck made up of cervical vertebrae. Surrounding each and every vertebrae is a bunch of really complex muscles called multifidus cervicus. They all control the neck and how it's going and moving along. 
in this tube-like structure is the trachea. Usually would have run right along here, but it's kind of kind of messed up. Then right behind it, you can't really see it, but you guessed it. It's the esophagus. You guessed it once again. What goes through it? Bolus. Yeah, that. So yeah, that's the neck and head of this turkey person. All right. So now let's talk about birds eyes now birds have two, two sorts of light receptors rods and cones rods are used mainly in the dark for night vision because they are very sensitive to smaller quantities of light light cones are able to detect specific colors or wavelengths now, birds can see, actually, into ultraviolet. We have an ultraviolet light here, so let's see what kind of things we can see. Now, this is a parakeet from, that has escaped from somewhere here in Chicago and you can see right on the top of its head it's it just looks like a yellow bird now but once you shine the light on it just the top of its head some on the cheeks glow very bright and so that is one way how male birds can show off for the female birds and we don't even know it Alright, my name is Ben Sanders, and I am here with Storytime Part 3. My guest is the ivory-billed woodpecker and the pileated woodpecker. And this ivory-billed woodpecker is a woodpecker that was native to the virgin forests of the southeastern United States, along with few locations in Cuba. This is one of the biggest woodpeckers and about the size of a crow. The species extinction is sort of up for debate. There have been many, many reports in the last decade and a half of people seeing these ivory-billed woodpeckers. Although there is no photographic, there is no definitive photographic evidence that the pileated, that the ivory-billed woodpecker is still alive. There are people who say they have seen it. In 2005, there was a major report published by the Cornell University, and they claim to have seen the ivory-billed woodpecker in Florida. This bird is listed as critically endangered or extinct, but according to more birdier people, it is considered extinct. This bird's feathers were sought after by the hat trade, as with most birds are. This bird, you can obviously tell it's the ivory build because of its ivory bill. Alternatively, the pileated woodpecker is a bird that is not extinct, and you can actually find it here in Illinois if you know where and when to look. I'm Ben Sanders. I'd like to thank my guests ivory-billed woodpecker and pileated woodpecker. This is NPR Storytime. My name is Ben Sanders, and thank you for watching my long but brief, mind you, extremely brief video about bird anatomy. Signing off, this is Ben Sanders. P.S. All of the photos of birds were mine, and if you would like to contact me, my email is
benss.sanders1 at gmail.com. Thank you very much.